Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Ji Xiaojun in Beijing. And in today's program, we are continuing with our major series about Chinese Kung Fu. China has one of the longest uninterrupted martial arts traditions of any country in the world. Over the centuries, hundreds of different martial arts styles have developed in China, of which there is no doubting what the most famous is, Shaolin Kung Fu. Originally, it was practiced by the monks of Shaolin Temple as a way of keeping fit. With time, it incorporated the best fighting skills from other schools of martial arts and spread beyond the temple walls. In today's program, we'll explore the origin and history of Shaolin Kung Fu, probably the most famous school of martial arts in the world. In August 2007, many websites carried the following as a headline story. Shaolin Temple, the birthplace of the Chan sect of Buddhism, or Zen as it came to be called in Japan, was planning to go public. However, when the temple's abbot, monk Shu Yongxin, denied the report, Mount Sung Park Management stepped in to clarify the situation. It was Mount Sung's Shaolin Tourism Group Company that was planning to be listed in late 2008 or 2009, and not Shaolin Temple itself. Shaolin Temple had been at the center of public attention for a number of years preceding this incident. For the Kung Fu tours it organized around the world, the temple's entanglement in a trademark lawsuit, its founding of a commercial business, its application to be included in the World Oral and Intangible Cultural Heritage List, and its worldwide search for the best Kung Fu practitioners. To say nothing of the temple revealing its legendary Kung Fu secrets online. To some extent then, this thousand-year-old temple that had been the center of so many popular Kung Fu stories was the center of the world of swordsmen once again. At the center of this whirlpool was the temple's abbot Shu Yongxin, regarded by many people as the CEO of Shaolin Temple. Comparing the abbot to a CEO is not unfounded, for almost every significant change the temple has experienced during the last 20 years has been related in one way or another to him. Some people regard the abbot of Shaolin Temple as a controversial figure, but to many more, he is a hero who has revitalized the temple and taken Shaolin Kung Fu to the world. For a very long time, the Shaolin Temple School of Kung Fu was regarded as the number one school of martial arts. It was the most influential, had the longest history, and incorporated more styles of Kung Fu than any other. Shaolin Temple is located on top of Mount Sung in Hunan Province on China's Central Plain, and it is a place of considerable military significance where Kung Fu masters have resided since ancient times. 
The reason Shaolin Kung Fu is profound is that it brings together many different Kung Fu styles. At one moment it can be vigorous and swift, at another gentle and soft. And it is said that Shaolin Kung Fu is about a perfect combination of motion and stillness. Shaolin Kung Fu was originally practiced by monks simply to keep fit, but it incorporated the best fighting skills from other schools. There are, as a result, different types of Shaolin Kung Fu, with some people claiming there were once as many as 360. Some of these have inevitably been lost, but even so, more than a hundred are still practiced today. The temple has even founded martial arts academies and other centers in order to spread its style of Kung Fu, and so many schools owe their origins to Shaolin. Millions of people know that Shaolin Temple is the birthplace of Shaolin Kung Fu. However, how did Shaolin Kung Fu come to develop? And who created the school of Kung Fu that is now famous throughout the entire world? In the year 495, the 19th year of the reign of Emperor Taihu during the Northern Wei Dynasty, a monk belonging to the Hinayana sect of Buddhism journeyed from India to China on foot. Because he preferred living in places set apart from the bustle of the secular world, Emperor Shaowen, himself a pious Buddhist, had a temple built for the monk in the depths of a forest in Hunan province. That temple was named Shaolin. Many other monks came to join the monk from India at his temple in the forest, and before long, Shaolin Temple grew to considerable size. However, most of the activities the temple engaged in at this time were centered on the translation of Buddhist texts and had nothing to do with Kung Fu. As the monk from India had no knowledge of Kung Fu, it is reasonable to assume that he was not the person who initiated Shaolin Kung Fu. But in the year 527, for the purpose of spreading the Chan sect of Buddhism, another Indian monk named Bodhai Hama came to Shaolin Temple, and there he sat in front of a wall in deep meditation for nine years. Today, Bodhai Hama is regarded as the founder of the Chinese Chan sect of Buddhism, and some historians go further, considering him the founder of Shaolin Kung Fu. Tradition has it that the famous Bodai Hama 18 hand moves of Shaolin Kung Fu were devised by the legendary monk himself. This tradition holds that sitting all day long in front of the wall immersed in deep meditation, one could easily become tired and fall asleep, but this was inadvisable, as the forest in which Shaolin Temple was located was not short of dangerous wild animals. Bodai Hama was aware that having self-defense skills in this environment was an absolute must, and so he came up with his famous 18 moves by studying the moves ancient people had used to keep fit. He then taught these moves to other monks, and later these moves became the earliest form of Shaolin boxing. Between meditations, Bodai Hama practiced with weapons such as the cudgel, rapier and spade, and he formulated a set of skills for each. He also developed the Shaolin leaps by studying flying birds. The moves he invented later became the famous Bodai Hama's 18 essentials, which place stress on the practice of both motion and stillness, and these lie at the very core of Shaolin Kung Fu. In recent years, however, some historians have questioned this accepted version of how Shaolin Kung Fu came into being. As they see it, Bodhidharma was not the founder of Shaolin Kung Fu. The fact is, they say, no records about Kung Fu have ever been found that even mentioned his name. Shaolin's is not the This is a question. 我们目前没有明确的记载关于达摩在那里创编了若干全数的记载他的时间都很晚可信度比较低但是我们现在能看到有明确的记载在达摩的时代里少林寺已经有武了酬禅师是会脚力的会摔跤的他也练习各种纵
。所以我们相信，在达摩的那个时代里，少林寺里已经有武艺。啊，至于武艺是什么形式，到底是什么一个状态，我们还需要继续去研究它。那么少林寺的武艺到底是不是达摩传的，我们也还要继续去研究它。我们既不做否定之说，也不把它加以肯定。The available sources lead us to conclude that Kung Fu was already being practiced at Shaolin Temple during the Northern Wei Dynasty, that Bodai Hama was not the teacher. Some monks would have practiced Kung Fu in the secular world before they entered Shaolin Temple, and they would have brought their knowledge of Kung Fu with them into their temple lives. It seems reasonable to conclude that the birth of Shaolin Kung Fu probably came about as a result of discussions and demonstrations held among these monks in their spare time. However, during the 100 years between the founding of the temple and the late Sui dynasty, Kung Fu was limited to within the temple, and it was regarded as nothing more than as a way to keep fit. It was never accorded any real attention from society at large. But then around the time of the late Sui and early Tang dynasties, something significant is said to have happened at Shaolin Temple. This has been frequently referred to by storytellers as how the 13 cudgel monks from Shaolin Temple saved the life of the soon-to-be Tang Emperor. Historians have long been locked in a debate about the authenticity of this story, and the majority of them regard it as fiction. However, there are believers who have no doubt at all that the story recounts an historical event, and that the 13 cudgel monks from Shaolin Temple did indeed save the life of Li Shermin, the man who would go on to become the emperor of the Tang dynasty. They base their argument on a work of art found inside the hall of Guanyin, a building located in the northeastern corner of the Shaolin Temple complex. Inside the hall is a fresco which illustrates how the 13 monks accomplished their mission. According to the story, when the Tang Prince Li Shermin came to Luoyang, he lost an important battle and was captured by his enemies. However, by using their incredible martial arts skills, 13 Shaolin monks ventured into the prison where he was detained and managed to get the future emperor out. Many historians heap scorn on the story, pointing out that there would have been no chance of the monks being able to perform such a feat when faced with what would have been a heavily guarded prison.